also, the children of Israel here were confronted by crisis. What is the one you are going through now? I am praying for you as a prophet of God by the apostolic anointing upon me. Whatever are those crises that have massed themselves together against you, that has almost pushed you to forget God, to start to doubt the promises of God, may the power of God, the power of his resurrection, may they roll it away from your life and your family in Jesus' name. The crisis of life. They are always there. Now, look at these people. How do they try to solve the crisis of life? They started complaining and grumbling. Is that not many people do? You complain against your pastor, against your husband, against your wife, against your parent, against a constituted authority. But you know that never brings solution. Instead, it complicated it. They had human, man-made problems. By their complaint, they turned human problem to divine problem. It became more complicated. So snakes came and started biting them. What kind of snake is biting you now? The snake, the stink of sin? The snake of sickness? Going through all around your body? Cancer, diabetes, blood sugar, all kinds of sicknesses there. They are symbol of snakes, serpents there. And they are biting you now. I'm happy to inform you. I bring you the gospel of the good news. There's a solution out of that crisis. Whether it is the hardness of the time, whether it's our economic crisis, the insecurity, the lack of infrastructure, or it is the divine crisis we are going through that you can't explain that have challenged your health. And many people are dying as a result. Is there any solution? What is the solution? The people learn their lesson, although too late, but never late. And you can also learn your lesson as you are listening to this now. What do you do without delaying your marriage? What do you do without disappointment in your finances? What do you do without health issue that is crumbling, eating away your body? How do you undo the case of nagging between you and your husband? How do you undo children that are wayward? All these social problems family problem, spiritual problem, I like to tell you there is a way out. The people now came together. They cried unto Moses and asked Moses to pray unto their God. That is how to come out of life challenges, people of God. There is always a God that is ever there, ever near to answer the myriad challenges of our life. So they cried unto Moses. They cried and Moses cried unto God on their behalf. We need intercessors at this time. Man, when you are faced with challenges of life, the Bible said in the book of Philippians chapter 4, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. The way to come out of life's problem is to make your request known unto God. That was what the children of Israel did here. They made their request known unto God. And you can bring it today, the Bible tells us, and make it clear that we should pray in season and out of season. And the songwriter told us what a friend we have in Jesus, all our griefs and sins to bear, what a privilege to carry, everything to God in prayer. So they lifted up their voice and cried unto God together with their parent leader, Moses. And then God gave them a solution. A solution is coming your way. Don't give up, young man. Don't commit suicide. Don't use your tongue to destroy yourself. Don't cause God and die. There is a solution out. Number one, the crisis of life. Number two, the cry of the bereaved. Those who are defeated, those who are in crisis, you cry unto God. And number three now, the cure. What is the cure? Out of the crisis of life. God now gave Moses an instruction. That is where I am wrapping up today's church. The instruction God gave to Moses is so prophetic. It's so powerful. It's so profound. Prophetic in the sense that it was a pointer to the final solution to man's crisis in life. It's so powerful because it was so effective than any other treatment you could prescribe to the people. And it was so profound because what applied that time about 5,000 years ago is still very relevant to you and to me today. What was the solution? God told Moses, make a brazen serpent. Have a pole and hang it there. And anybody that is beaten by the venom of the serpent, no struggle, no cry, no complaint. Just look. As long as you have eyes and you can lift up your eyes and you look, you're going to live. And the Moses obeyed the Lord like that. And as many of them as were beaten, once they look unto the tree, they were healed. What is that telling you? It tells you, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, 
Take it or leave it. The cure, the final solution to the crisis of life is the cross. The cross is the pointer. It's the final destination that resolves, that dissolves, that destroys the crisis of man's kind. Irrespective of what you may be going through now, spiritual, secular, material, just look unto him. There is a solution for you at the cross. It is the symbol. That was why the Bible said in John chapter 3, eventually, he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the Old Testament, in the wilderness, that is how the Son of Man is lifted, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Can I bring you then to the summary of everything now? Jesus is the solution. He is the cure to every crisis of your life. So that what happened there was a shadow of the New Testament reality of the sacrifice that Jesus was going to pay for the redemption of mankind. Are you there? You are tired with your trouble. You are tired with barrenness. You are tired with financial challenges. You are tired with ill health. You are tired with the burden of sin. God wants to save you today. He wants to give you total and complete redemption. Redemption from sin, redemption from the cause of the law, and redemption from the just punishment for your sin. That redemption comes only at the cross. If you can look onto the cross today, there you have crucifixion. There you have restoration. There you have total oblivion. That means total cleansing from all your sorrow. There you have solution to every myriad of life challenge and it is at the cross that you have your salvation. Are you there today and you are faced with life challenges? I am pointing you to a cure. That cure is the cross of Calvary. Do you want to confess Christ? Do you want to look unto the cross? How do you do that? Submit yourself. Forget. Look at the children of Israel. They were not to struggle. All they need to do is to look and live. Look by faith. Think about what Jesus did for you on the cross and your solution is near you there in Jesus' name. You are a sinner there. Jesus loves you. He wants to save you. If you can confess your sins and you ask him for grace to forsake it and you look unto him, the blood that was shed on the cross will cleanse you and give you total freedom in Jesus' name. Can I pray with you very quickly? Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for everyone hearing this now in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in the US, United Kingdom or United States. I pray that the hand of God will reach out to you in Jesus' name. I'm praying that what Jesus did on the cross for your redemption, for your freedom, for your salvation, will manifest in your family, in your immediate situation now in Jesus' name. That bondage of sin in the name that is above every other name will destroy everything. We cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. You are free. You are liberated. You are set free in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.